Hello, everybody. We're here for lecture number seven. In this lecture, we're going to talk about a cell that might just be my favorite cell of all times. I'm super curious if anybody will fight me on that because I pretty much any cell I get to talk about, I find it fascinating and I love it. But I really do think that this cell, the melanocyte, might be my very favorite cell ever. So let me tell you why we get to spend an entire lecture talking about these amazing cells. Basically, I'm going to use the melanocyte as an opportunity for us to review everything that we've done in this class so far. One of the things I notice about hardcore biology classes is they often, and science classes in general, they often present such a fire hose of information to students that it, seeing the big picture and keeping things in context and with perspective is often missed. And I'll tell you right now, if you don't have perspective or context for all the little details that you're learning, the details don't stick. And I say this from experience. As a biology instructor, I have the great, um, privilege, the luckiness, the, the opportunity to review the content constantly. And I mean, how long have I been doing this? I've been putting things on YouTube for 13, 10, 12, 11, however many years that is. I've been putting things on YouTube for a long time and been teaching longer than that. So I've had years and years and years of teaching something, asking questions, getting confused, figuring out answers, asking people to help me, and over time, putting together a big picture understanding. Often, instructors with their big picture understanding forget that students often lack that. So this is a chance for us to sort of um, visualize the stuff we've already done. We're not going to introduce much new content, but we're just going to put names to stuff that we've already done. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to place ourselves, we're going to place the melanocyte in our levels of organization. So I'm going to ask you to do a thing before I come back with the next part of this, where we talk about the levels of organization, I want you to make a list. We're going to address all the levels of organization between the atom, which I have being up here as the smallest thing, and an organism, which is the human. We're not, it would be really interesting <laughs> to go beyond the human level of organization, the organism level of organization, and talk about population dynamics related to the melanocyte. Super interesting. I can't wait to have that conversation with you, but that's going to happen when we talk about genetics and proteins and things of that nature. Now let's just stick between atoms and organisms and you make that list. When I come back, I also will have made that list and we will um, place the, the where we are, we're going to place it into that level of organization and we're going to revisit that this entire lecture. Okay, so you do that part. Try to do it from memory and see how much you can come up with all the levels. See how much you can come up with um, without looking it up because the task, when you look it up, it's a, it's a research um, supported study strategy. It's called recall practice, that if you retrieval practice, if you try to remember something and, and retrieve it from your memory, even if you aren't successful at that, when you do look at the answer, you're more likely to remember it. Like how many of you have ever taken an exam? And when you get your exam back, like the only thing you look at are the things that you got wrong. And then you never, ever forget those things that you got wrong. Yeah, been there, done that. That's retrieval practice. Like that's the value. Like 
you really do remember that stuff. Even if you get it wrong, you remember when you look at the right answer. Okay, so that was a long aside just to say, you make the list, do the practice, and when I come back, we'll compare to what I have.